hand up. Oh, six, zero. Ten Academy, can you hear me clearly? Can I get some thumbs up? Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we are going to get started uh, immediately. We will be having our cool icebreakers during our community building session today. So let's save our time for that. For now, let's go ahead and then start with the stand up. Together, we are with two people who are going to be uh, engaging with us in this specific very fast stand up. Uh, the very first one is Arun. He's uh, one of the co founders of Ten Academic. You have probably met him if you attended the previous uh, information session that happened or an intro session on week zero. And then we also have um, Yababel. You can call him Yabi as a nickname. He is also one of the co founders and uh, biggest tech person, tech individual. You are going to be hearing and learning from him moving forward if you are successful to move into week one, of course. So let's get started like immediately. Arun, I can pass it to you. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Really happy to have you here and happy to be here. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I guess I can go first and then I'll hand over to you and then I guess we'll have time for Q&A. But uh, yeah, look, guys, this is the, it's not the first time we're doing it. It's not the last time. And we're really happy to be here with a group of young people like yourselves. And some of you may not be so young, but people who are interested in improving uh, their current status of employment. We've been working since 2017 on uh, developing our intensive training program. And we're really happy uh, not only with the results of the community, all of our alumni and the things that everyone is going out and doing, but uh, almost more importantly that we're getting, we're always able to find hungry young people who want to improve the work that they're doing. They want to go out and put the work in to find a better job, to make a difference to their communities, to their worlds, to their families. <clears throat> Everything that we do starts with uh, the people who are here today on this call. Uh, we had more than 1,100 people who started an application on the 10 Academy platform. And uh, today we won't have 1,100 people, but it's our goal. And I think that's the, the one key message that I would like you to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, every day for the next, for this week and also for next week uh, during the selection process, our goal is to admit 100% of you. Now, I'm just gonna say it again, we want to admit everyone to the training program. Now, the reason we're doing the assessment week is because we have a particular or a different way um, compared to most other programs that we operate. And we just want to make sure that you are using your time well and that we are able to help you get a global level job. And so Yababel is gonna be talking in great detail or in greater detail about um, what is our training approach, but I just wanted to underline that. I'm gonna present uh, a couple of slides really briefly just to go through it in a more comprehensive way. Um, while I'm doing that, we will have time at the end for Q&A. Uh, we have an hour together in this session, so we're gonna have time so if there's anything burning, please don't hesitate to put your hand up. Um, you can also type a question in the chat box. I may be on a different window, so if I don't uh, answer, then I'm sure someone from the team is going to, will just ping me and say something. But first, just a quick, quick introduction from me, as Pascaline uh, so nicely mentioned. My name is Arun Sharma. I'm one of the co-founders of Ten Academy. I've been uh, very fortunate to be able to work uh, with my colleague Yevabel for uh, more years than I can remember, um, or actually it's not more years than I can remember. It's been about seven years that we've been collaborating on this together with a growing team. We're about uh, 25 people uh, at 10 Academy and working together. Um, we're here to put on the intensive training program together with some other programs, uh, for example, the University of Jobs program and also the technology platform called 10X that you'll be using. So just a quick overview about uh, our organization. Um, so we are 172 graduates. We have uh, more than 30 people in training right now. And our employment rate after 12 months has been 95%. Um, we have a target of 50% women, 50% men. 
but uh, each of our cohorts has been, uh, almost all of our cohorts have been 30% women and our alumni is about more than one third women. So our goal is to get to 50%, but we want to, we have a special place in each of our training programs carved out for women. And for all of the women in the training program, you will uh, get information about the special, uh, some special sessions that we have on for you this week. This year, we're gonna be training over 1,200 people. Uh, not all of those will be intensive training as uh, you're here for. A lot of those people will be in a lighter training program, but the platform that we're building, the platform that we've built and that we're improving on, the content that we've put together will be reaching over a thousand people this year. Um, we did an impact report last year, and our projections show that every single person who goes through the intensive training program at 10 Academy over their working lifetime earns an extra 1.5 up to about 5 million US dollars per training. So that's a really good outcome for us, considering the uh, we've been able to bring the cost of the program um, down to actually what our cost of delivery is, as mentioned, or as we will mention, we're a not-for-profit organization. Um, so we charge you only slightly more than what it costs us to deliver. And the return, uh, as we see here, it's very high. Uh, over your lifetime, you can expect to earn an additional 1.5 to 5 million US dollars per trainee for people who make it through and graduate. We're a U.S. registered not-for-profit. Uh, the majority of our team is headquartered in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and we have presence in Nigeria, in Rwanda, and in Kenya. Uh, in Germany, where I'm sitting, and uh, we have board members uh, in the U.S. and Canada. Um, so, yeah, in many different parts of the world. We've been very fortunate over the years to be supported by Eric Schmidt, uh, the former CEO of Google, uh, by Jeff Dean, uh, Google's chief scientist, the MasterCard Foundation, the GitLab Foundation, Peter Thiel uh, via the George Mason University Mercata Center, the Wellcome Trust, UNESCO. But the most important contribution that we, that we have are deferred tuition payments from trainees like yourselves. So when people match into work and they're earning above a minimum salary, the contributions that they make um, to pay forward or to pay the remaining cost of their tuition is one of the most important sources of income for us. This is a map of where some of our alumni are working. If you look at uh, the world, um, we haven't covered all different, actually we have covered all continents, which we're very happy about. There are some notable countries which stand out where we don't have people placed. Russia stands out. Asia is an area that we want to focus on, but we've covered many countries in Africa, North America, South America, uh, and Europe. So there's some logos there. We can go into that in more detail later on. So I wanted to go briefly through um, why we're here and what our goal is with the intensive training program. So we only have two goals with the intensive training program, at least from my perspective. And for those of you who continue with us, uh, which we hope you will, then you will see that uh, Yepabel and I, uh, we, di we disagree on many things. So I'm sure he's gonna tell you something different. Um, and at the core, we actually agree on most things, but uh, sometimes we just present it in a different way. So our goal, from my perspective, is to get you a global level AI job. That's number one. And we want to do, working together, we want you to get there faster than you would be able to do it yourself. We know that every single smart, hardworking young person is able to get a global level AI job or able to get an AI job. And over the years, they can kind of upgrade that from where they're working now into a global level job. But doing it alone, uh, in our experience, in what we've seen, takes most people um, a couple of years. And working together, we expect to get you there in a shorter period of time. The three months technical training, three months supported job search phase. And after that, most people uh, within about 12 months match into a good global level job. That's goal number one, get you into a global level AI job. Goal number two is we want to help you grow quickly in your career once you're working. And we think there's three sub-components to that. There's the cultural component, so that you have you develop a culture of being able to deliver, of thinking things through, of always delivering value. Um, you have a community of people around you. It's very difficult to do this sort of work by yourself. Um, first of all, to motivate you. Second of all, people to ask questions. Third of all, people to learn from. Fourth of all, people to teach. And the third one is confidence. And we know that when it gets comes to interviews, when it comes to work, having the right level of confidence is extremely important. So we only have two goals with our intensive training, and I'm going to be 
repeating these uh, for the next uh, six months, but also for the next couple of minutes. One is we want to help you get a global level AI job. And the second is we want to help you grow quickly in your career once you're working. So when some people describe this as a boot camp, this is one of the reasons why I, uh, I personally feel like it's a, not a great fit. A boot camp, in my, uh, in my thinking, wants to get you a job and stop. We want to go further. We want to identify people that can not only get a job, but where they can develop the culture, they can work within a community, and they have the confidence to grow quickly in that job and to establish themselves as something unique, as a unique person, as a uh, valuable contributor to our community. And those are the people who are going to grow quickly in their careers once they're working. Our goal for this week, as I mentioned before, and I'm going to say it again, we want to admit 100% of the people here. That being said, we do have a selection process. And uh, you've already gone through the selection process. You've seen the application. You've gone through the prerequisite quiz. Uh, this is week zero right now. And there will be an interview uh, happening next week. Um, we've had 1,179 people create applications, uh, create or open up uh, a profile on the platform is the most we've ever had. Um, and there's over 100 people who have been invited here. The intensive training, we're going to go through it in a lot more detail, weeks 1 to 12. We have uh, one challenge per week, so there's a mistake there. It's actually not four challenges. It's uh, about 10 challenges. Uh, it might end up being 9, might end up being 11. Uh, and we're going to be covering Gen AI, ML Inch, and data engineering. And what we do in developing these challenges um, is we work to understand what industry is looking for. And we know, and I mentioned this on the webinar uh, or the admissions, the sort of preparation for the quiz, we understand what industry is looking for by working with our industry partners, by speaking with our alumni, and also by scanning um, jobs that uh, employers are posting. And by developing a detailed understanding of what industry is looking for and our knowledge of what a typical recent university graduate from Africa has in terms of skills, we're able then to say, this is where most people are, this is what industry is looking for, and the technical content, as well as their career careers content, is meant to bridge that gap. So that's, that's about it uh, in terms of the intensive training. It sounds very simple, it is very straightforward, but there's a lot of different content, a lot of different material that we're going to be exposing you to over the 12 weeks. We don't have exams, we don't have tests. Every single thing that you will be doing is to develop your own profile. Every single thing that you will be doing, including this week, is to teach uh, to teach you something. And we're also, in addition to the technical challenges, in addition to the careers challenges and the careers materials, we're also going to have guest talks, uh, careers challenges, community sessions. Over the next uh, three months, or in the first uh, three months of the training, it's going to be a very intense uh, work simulation experience. And after that, we go into the supported job search phase. So it's not enough for us just to say, here's the certificate, and we think that you're better. Now, good luck and go off and do it yourself. We want you um, to, we want to work with you to make sure that you um, go through the motions and go through the process to actually apply to get, uh, to improve your chances of employment to the right level. So how do we do that? Number one, uh, over the first three months, you're going to be over the, sorry, the first three months of the supported job search phase, our target is applying for about 500 jobs together. So those numbers become very important. Um, it does take a lot of job applications. It does take a lot of work. And we learned that doing that together is a lot easier than doing that alone. The second is we're going to be help you identify areas of your weakness and then work with you to upskill yourself in those areas. And then we're going to be going through this cycle with you of apply, learn, interview. And if you're not successful in that interview, then that cycle of learning again, what were you missing? Interview and learn and be ready to apply for those multiple hundreds of jobs. And um, the community that we're going to be, uh, we're going to have in the first three months, the technical training phase will continue during the supported job search phase. So I wanted to just cover four things on how to be successful this week. Number one is work ethic. So there's no shortcut to just putting in a lot of work. No matter how efficient you try and be, if you have a somebody else uh, in the training 
who is putting in 10 hours a day and you're putting in five hours a day, it's unlikely that you are going to be able to get more achieved in your five hours a day than he or she will in, your in the 10 hours a day. So putting in the work is important. It's one thing that we're looking for. And what we've seen over the years is the people who are successful at putting in the work, it's usually because they have the right system around them to focus on the work. So how are people taking care of internet, electricity, a good place to work, someone to feed them, maybe a little bit of laundry, um, friends to take breaks with, but getting the, the framework conditions right to allow you, allow you to put the work in is important. Um, trying everything. So one of the, as I'm gonna go back to what I said before, we want to admit 100% of people. Um, one of the biggest causes for us not admitting people is people simply not handing things in. Um, because they think it's too difficult or they don't want to do it or they're, they're convinced that they're not the right fit uh, for the program. So I'm here to say we want you to try everything and if you've made it this far, if you put the work in, I can, uh, I can see from my experience that more than likely you're the right fit for the program. I'd like to say I guarantee you that you can make it, but if you put the work in and you've made it this far, um, we want you to be part of the program. Curiosity. So we're going to expose you to a lot um, over the coming week, but also over the next six months. But there's a lot more to learn. We cannot possibly uh, expose you to everything that there is to learn. And so part of what we want you to do this week, um, but also throughout the training, is figure out what you're interested in learning more about and go deeper in that area. We also want you to maximize your learning. So not, don't worry about the leaderboard. We will have a leaderboard. We will be giving you grades. There, are, there will be um, scores that will be coming out. But play the longer game. We've seen this over the years. The people who play the short game, they will be successful to a certain level. But the people who really try and understand, work well with others, ask good questions, and are really curious, they're the ones who are really successful in the long run. So we want you to be curious. So work ethic, putting in the work, being curious. And number three, and this may be contrary to what many of you have been taught in your undergraduate careers, work with others, help others, teach others, and let others teach you as well. You will not be able to be successful in the work environment as an individual contributor. There is no company in the world that we know of that hires only individual contributors or where you will not be working with others. So we'd like you to take that mindset of I'm going to be a lone wolf and I'm going to work alone put it in the closet, put it outside, hide it, dig it underground, put it away, put it in the river. It should stop now because you will not be successful at work, working alone. Or if you can't learn from others or you can't teach others, I would encourage you uh, to put that mindset away, bury it, burn it, uh, do whatever you have to do. We want you to extend your network starting from this week and build deep connections, especially outside of those people who you know in real life. So start building networks of people from different countries. Collaboration, trust building, and just talking. And part of uh, the community, and one of the reasons why we have Cascaline and the careers team and uh, the community that we want to build is when you get to the world of work, the ability to have what's called a water cooler conversation or talking about uh, English Premier League or talking about music or talking about philosophy, talking about things which are not directly related to your work, will impact your ability to be successful uh, at work. And the final thing, uh, sorry, the second last thing is a bias to self-learn. So this goes in hand in hand with curiosity. Um, we will not be telling you uh, what to do. We will be giving you a goal in mind. We'll be giving you a goal, we'll be giving you support, and we're there to answer questions. But if you need to find something, you all have access to this thing called the internet where information is available that is more up to date than what we can provide you now. So go and develop the mindset of, I'm going to figure this out. Or if I don't know how to figure this out, I'm going to try one, two, three things. Teach yourself something, try something. And that's going to be really, again, why are we doing this? Because this is what we think and this is what we know industry uh, rewards as very successful people. And so finally, professionalism. Um, we expect you to be professional. We want you to show up to every session and be ready with questions. We want you to do your own work. We do encourage collaboration. 
but collaboration is not copy. You need to understand what it is that you're submitting. If you've just gone and found something on the, online or you've just gotten that from a friend and you have no idea what you're doing, that's not, that's not collaboration, that's simply copy. And starting from today, we would like you to leave this community or this organization better um, than when you joined it. So it's a little typo here, so I'm gonna actually just fix that. You guys have seen I've made a couple of typos here, um, but I'm gonna fix that. So we want you to be professional. So I'm just gonna reiterate, our goal is to get you a global level AI job, and that's number one, but we're not a boot camp. We don't just want you to get that job, we want you to grow quickly in your career once you're working. And our goal for this week is to admit 100% of people here. So if you have any questions, uh, and I'm sure you guys will have questions this week, we've divided ourselves uh, essentially into two different teams. So you can Slack me, uh, you can Slack Rodas, who's our community manager, I don't think, or not, not our community manager, our cohort manager. I don't think she's spoken yet. You can reach out to Pascaline, you can reach out to any of the tutors. Slack's our primary uh, mode of communication, but I'm gonna hand over to Yebaba. I think we'll have time for Q&A Q at the end, but uh, I'll just stop by saying very happy to have uh, each and every one of you here with us and uh, we are looking forward to having ideally every single person who's been admitted to week zero um, join cohort bf training program <clears throat> hello and uh, welcome everyone so i am Yababa, and i'm gonna switch on also my camera so that you can see but i am not in the say in a cleaner room um i think arun already described you know the, the most important things that i would like also to focus uh, except i'm not going to repeat but i'm going to really again repeat just the, the the key elements that are um required and that you should listen again and again interpret it in your own way what do we mean i mean maybe like in a presentation you have seen lots of presentations maybe in your life and almost always just you hear nice and then you pass it but you know the, the three things, at least the minimum, that I want you to focus in that presentation. And really, if you want to succeed with the training we provide, as well as in life in general, in my opinion, is that the first thing that he mentioned, hard work and curiosity, and then community. Now, the professionalism and the self, uh, you know, bias to action or bias to self-learn, they're all just, when you are curious, they somehow, you know, you, you will hear them, but it, it had to be explicitly written because that's a key component when you go into a job interview, you know, people might not be able to see your curiosity or be able to see your, your, your social, but therefore you have to explicitly um, then make sure that you communicate as well in a professional way, as well as also that you demonstrate yourself to bias, sorry, your bias to self-learn or your bias to action. But I would say the three most important things you should repeat again and again. If you don't understand it or if it doesn't make that much sense, I want you to make sense of it. And this week is, you know, that you hard work, you have to be convinced hard work pays. Even if it means like in your kind of life or in your surrounding, hard work has not been paying off. And I guarantee you this is what we are as an organization is standing. It is to change that narrative. And definitely hard work must pay off. And then, but hard work along with our curiosity is a really hard life. And therefore, curiosity allows it to be that every single part of that hard work is rewarding and nourishing. And of course, doing it alone is gonna be, yeah, it's, I mean, we don't know how that will work, but, and I think you know it, and it's easier to see the whole world. It, there's no, it's a denial if you're, if you're just to be successful alone. Nothing in your life comes from a work that is done by you in, in, in part. It's just another community, another person that contributes to the world and that we are using. So therefore, you know, that's a reality that is set. So I want to, you know, really, really emphasize that because I would, I would feel if we had understood that really well, and we are, it's also the same words for us as Ten Academy, as an individual, as Yapapal, if I had understood the meaning of these three, I think everything that I have done can be interpreted as one of that. And, and how do you then communicate that to another person is a hard one. We just have to say it and therefore we will tell you, but you know, my, like the emphasis that I give in those three elements 
is is just more than anything I will tell you in this training, whether in week zero or you know post like and during the actual main training. So I would really really want to emphasize on that. And then after that, I want to mention so I'm going to also just give you a, a small presentation where you you see how we approach training. You know, we love universities. Universities did a great job, but they have you know we have seen it at least that they are not preparing us. Normally they are not geared or towards like a job. They are more towards knowledge, towards enabling you to do something. But the job requires a special attention, especially post university and especially if the opportunity like in Africa is not um, you know, available as much. And for that, you need a special type of training. And we think what we are providing is that they, this, the stream is quick like sometimes I like to call it a makeup artist because we cannot teach you like the university all the knowledge. We can only change your mindset, which means appear in the job radar to be ready and to be attractive, right? So in that sense, uh, our design is so much focused again and again in job. And I'm just going to present. So I hope you see my screen. Yeah, it's just so, coming up. It's just coming up now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. So it is like the training model. It's all about, you know, if you ask me again and again, I'm gonna, you know, say what, why, how, all are about job. And that means it's a very focused training. We're not standing here trying to provide knowledge, deep knowledge, you know, shallow knowledge. It's not about that. It's about whatever makes, you know, put you into the global level job such that you are going to be qualified, you're going to be selected, you're going to be performing in the job. So it's all about job and the model, the training model is also reflecting um, that one. And you'll see what I mean. So the principles, just if we start from just the, what, how we design trainings, it is all about jobs. And by jobs, it mirrors a real job situation. And it is based on self and community learning because in the job, that's what's going to happen in actual in a company and any whether it's a established or a startup it's going to be the same outcomes and insights of projects to be valuable and worth sharing and that's exactly what business objectives every business doesn't hire you just so that you can play it is about something the insights or whatever products you, you put are about either to drive increase you know revenue or um, uh, reduce cost or you know become the next big thing right and because we don't know also how to do that, we are also data driven. And that's why data driven is not, you know, something you just say, oh, I want to be data driven. It's just, it's a way of, if you don't know what you're doing, that means if you don't have like, you know, a God type of knowledge, all you have to do is just follow the data and usually that leads. And that's because the data driven uh, methodology is a scientific method. And the scientific method has been shown to prove, to work again and again, irrespective of the people who does it. And therefore, we follow the same. And the process and the outcome principles, that means so the previous one is just the, the design. And this one is more in you know, how, like, how should we then um, allocate the time and, and all of that? And what, what should be the outcome? And all of that principles, it must lead to a financial freedom as fast as possible. That's why it's, we really make it six months, three months more of, um, you know, intensive and three months of like job search so, so that you can get actually a job that pays as fast as possible. And it should also provide you an opportunity with lots of upfront costs. So that's why we have different mechanisms of like, you know, we, it's, we are a nonprofit and we're not charging for profits, but we have to be sustainable, but it has to also allow people with, without much um, uh, money, but who wants to go and who have the skill and the talent should be able to have to access it and that's what uh, our arrangement and it has to have a, it has to provide an ecosystem to fast learn uh, work culture and that's why all of our mirroring stand up and everything else is just going to be the ecosystem we provide you is going to be simulating more or less not only simulating it it is actually most of the time it is an ecosystem of the work culture it, it will you will get used to the, the work culture ecosystem and of course we understand we are focused in Africa and it has to be, um, you know, infrastructure resilient. That means if internet's cut, you know, power cut off, then you should be able to access the same thing and you should be able to get the same thing 
um, without, so that it is resilient with uh, failure in infrastructure. And so the implementation drives, I mean, I think that is basically we have decided intentionally in the past that we must be focusing on emerging jobs instead of already established jobs, because in established jobs, competing as young and, um, you know, as someone who's going to be junior is going to be very hard because most people want a senior um, uh, talent in, that, in those areas. But in emerging fields like uh, generative AI, machine learning, you know, um, and data engineering, these are a lot more one can access. And also we focus on engineering because the science part of it sometimes takes, you know, PhDs and masters, while the engineering components um, implementation of you know those those things is much easier. So we focus on most of the engineering component and also just on the emerging fields like ML data and web AI uh, elements. So you know just as a summary of like you know what makes it. Arun told you how successful we became, and it is basically just driving. You know it's driven by data. We are much more of like executing this thing in a and as best our potential as possible, and in a way that admits a certain um, basic fact that we don't know or to measure your skill or knowledge or your experience too much to a job, a global level job, which in itself is, uh, you know, kind of hard, it's not easy to define, is a very complex process. And therefore, we understood from the beginning that a competency, we want to be competency driven. That means competency means something that you're competent to the job, right? So people are measuring or assessing one way or another that competency. But that competency is unfortunately not easy. It's not like you are given a multiple choice question and then you're going to be ticking and, you know, okay, 80 and above is competent. No, it's not like that. Competency is a construct. It is in the mind of people and it is kind of a latent variable if you know something or it just is a construct. You can't directly measure competency. And therefore, what you can measure is what we call observation. That observation means we give you a task and you respond on some sample, you know, sample response on that task. If we say, you know, write a blog, you know, you write a blog and you put pictures in the blog, you put kind of sections in a, in, in titles, and therefore those are your response samples. And we know this is all we have. In everything that we give you, you know, even if we just say come and talk or just you know interact with people, it is a task, and then you we sample something, maybe your Slack message, you know, maybe your conversations in, in Gmeet. That's all we have, right? So we have observations on and the tasks that we give you must be, of course, mirroring whatever we want to do. We must select tasks that actually help. In for us to measure something, something, as I said earlier, your competency in such a way that we then guide you because we know your competency is here. You have to be in that competency and this is the best way to, to go. So we want, you know, all the training is all about that, right? It's to measure where you are, to then uh, we know what the job or to measure what the job wants, the competencies that the job wants. And then for us to tell you the best, uh, the most, you know, the best possible paths, um, a route from where you are to there. That's just our task. Therefore, like that observation is our measurement. And then, of course, we have to score and interpret, you know, whether this task, for example, is a higher weight or a lower weight to which degree of the, you know, the competency. So that's it. So all we then are doing is, and all the training is modeled exactly like that. Tasks, we sample tasks from real life jobs. You know, we, um, talk to people who are working in the job already. We talk to CEOs and founders and you know, come people who interview you so that we get exactly the tasks that, that are actually mirroring the real job. And then uh, we basically then score them and measure like or give you feedback on that such that you are closer to the competency of the job. So again, I'm going to be very fast. So most of the, the time, what we do, if we are not talking to people at the job, we also scrape jobs from everywhere, like LinkedIn, Indeed, and others. And we try to learn what skills, what tasks usually are required in those job, inter you know, in jo job descriptions. And we extract 
jobs from that and then we, you know the job um this from the job descriptions we extract what we call skill knowledge attitude and experience such that we can convert them into actually um tasks that we give you so for example in terms of skill project management time management communication collaboration and teamwork for example in terms of knowledge it could be understanding different data models performance tuning data life management cloud data solution data governance and compliance could be and then in terms of attitude it could be the attention to details problem solving mindset collaboration and communication ethical consideration continuous learning so and then in terms of experience of course do you have you have you been doing lots of projects in terms of data cleaning and transformation and sort of experience with tools and technologies real world projects industry specific applications so these are basically extracted i'm not writing them just like you know what you see is extracted actually from jobs in the form of this so and if we aggregate lots of jobs that we extract what are the key in terms of for example skills what are the key skills required in job descriptions ah we realize sql is really a lot demanded in the areas that we want and python as well as testing you know database security server javascript react you know these are things that that are actually demanded and therefore we try to demand it from you as well so if we ask you to do it know that these are just things that come that when you apply for a job that is required mostly and then you know we for the skills we we do some processing and then when we go also into a particular for example one part for example database and data engineering and then we from all of the jobs that are requested then we ask also what are actually the you know the sub skills and the sub knowledge and the sub attitudes that are required for that and that way we will be able to generate tasks so that means our training you know i will stop here because that's just the whole process our training therefore is trying to provide that being data driven and helping you whatever you learn here that it is actually targeting as i said earlier the job that means enabling you to be job ready and to be able to work anywhere in the world with the kind of the, the domains or with the specialization or exit points that we uh, we train you so i will stop there and i think in the question and answer we will talk and you will have more uh, questions also throughout the this week as well as in the coming ones we will talk so if you have any questions you will ask there as well so yeah maybe just back to um who, we can go, we can go straight into q a if you guys have questions you can type them in the chat box or put your hand up and one of us will answer so are there any questions we want to make sure everyone knows why they're here uh where we've come from and where we want to go with you the next session starts um, in 20 minutes, where we actually introduce the week's challenge. Seeing lots of people from different parts, mainly from Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Benin, Sudan, uh, any other places? So are there any questions, guys? If we've covered everything, that's perfect. Then we can go and take a comfort break before we start the uh, introduction to the challenge. Yeah, we're gonna be sharing all presentations. You'll get a link in your Slack group. So Slack is the main place, our main communication platform. So you'll be getting, these videos will be recorded, links will be uploaded, presentations will be shared as well. Jolly asks, uh, and then we'll go to uh, Giredi, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Are the jobs local, international, or remote? Uh, it depends. I mean, so we are a training organization. We're not matching you directly into a job. Um, we will work with you to find the right job, or we'll work with you on your job search process. And so, Jolly, we have the majority of our people are working uh, for international companies on a remote basis. Some people end up working for uh, big, <coughs> big companies in their country of origin, uh, doing AI work and some people end up relocating. But the majority of our people end up getting uh, remote jobs for companies that are located in, I would say, in North America, in Europe, uh, in Asia, as you've seen from this in this map. Garrity? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Garrity Nidia. I'm from Rwanda, and uh, I'm a second. With all, 
Uh, yeah. But my question is, um, I have seen that you have different uh, different disciplines you are training on, uh, ranging from Python, AI, data science, and web development. And my question is, is uh, is it mandatory for everyone to follow those or disciplines, or uh, each and every one depends on his interests? Uh, I can just uh, follow AI instead of the web, web development. For example, I'm just concentrating on machine learning and so on. So I, I don't need to follow this. Just is it mandatory to follow all those disciplines uh, through the training? Yeah, we will. Do you want to answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is so in for the like basically for all parts of the training, there is no specialization in terms of what you do. Because you are going to be a junior role, and you are you need to be familiar with everything, and the, and and everything is every project underpins through SQL and um, and Python and JavaScript. So, which means you should be able to adapt to all of the situations. So there's no you're not going to choose and work on the machine learning part only or on the data engineering part only. The challenges will be given to everyone. We might specialize on kind of what tasks you do within that part, but again, the challenge document will be shared and you will be able, you you know, you will be asked to do everything. The, the reason being like, you, there is, it's not a specialization course. It's like a junior role we are providing. So that means you need to be familiar with almost everything, um, but, of course, we are specializing on a very particular ones like data engineering, machine learning engineering, AI engineering, and all of them, they overlap a lot. So in, in any way, even if we were to divide it, you will be doing more or less the same thing. So, but just the short answer is yes, you will be doing everything. You. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, Wandera asks if someone didn't make it past week zero but paid upfront, what happens? Wandera, that hasn't happened to us. Um, we don't accept upfront payments unless we've interviewed this person, spoken to them, and we've convinced ourselves that uh, he or she is a fit for the program. So that hasn't uh, that hasn't come up. Uh, we do interviews with every single person who gets into week zero, and we establish we're able to uh, establish very quickly whether there's a fit um, for the program. Ahmed, uh, Yevabel has just answered your question. Jolly asks, what are the challenges participants face during the stage and how can we improve on it as a participant? Um, so I just want to go back to what I said, what we're looking for and how to be successful. Putting the work in, I think, is, uh, is the most important thing and submitting everything. There is nothing uh, that we will present to you which cannot be done during this week if you put the time into it and use the support that's provided. You will always have access to tutors. You can, uh, during working hours from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. UTC, you're guaranteed a response within a couple of minutes. Five minutes is our target. So the biggest challenge that participants face is giving up. So if you don't give up, uh, you'll be fine. I think I, I want to just add exactly on that giving up. I think it is going to be overwhelming. Read the challenge document. It is expected in week zero that it, it would look very overwhelming. And persistence and not giving up is, you know, basically the most you can do. Um, and yeah, so I think I would say if you do that and if you persist despite your internal feeling is kind of going to be like telling you just run um, because it's going to be testing your internal makeup as well you know am i capable is it just am i in the wrong place there are so many things people would feel because when they hear other people say and they they seem to be understood other people seem to understand something you don't understand something and that is really not the case persistence is the you know the most it's surprising how if you arrive at the end with persisting so many things so many of the stories in the in your head just somehow change and becomes a winning like wow i'm amazing and so it's kind of persist and you will see many things yeah and i, I think just one thing to add to that 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 cultural shift of and the, why do we do this we do this because in the world of work um 
the ideal employee or people who go really quickly are the ones who are not trying to do as little work as possible. They're the ones who can A, work hard, and B, they're able to prioritize what's important and get the high value things done. So when we are now look, we're still working with alumni, companies are still coming to us and looking now to place more experienced people. The ones, the mindset that our alumni are bringing, this high growth, persistent mindset, work ethic mindset, it's in, you'd be amazed at uh, the demand that uh, companies have for that type of talent. So my advice to you is the same advice that I give to my teenage children, put your fears to the side and just do the work and you'll have to trust that uh, the system that we've put together is um, will get you to where you want to get to, which is this job. Grace asks, what is the support that will be available for students or is it going to be more of self-learning? So Grace, we are not, uh, we are not a self-paced course. So the support that we are providing is, uh, I would say, threefold. Number one is we have laid out and we'll be presenting that in the challenge document exactly what we want you to get done this week when it has to be handed in um, and some reading materials where you can go and learn. So number one is we give you a structure of what it is that you should be learning. Number two is we have, we'll be giving you support in terms of tutorials, in terms of the ability to ask questions, in terms of a community of other people who will be answering your questions. So you're not going to be learning alone, but you will have to do your own coding within a community of people. The third is the community aspect. Um, we will have community building sessions every day. Um, your Slack channel should be a very active place. Most successful people are sitting in front of their laptops. They're busy coding. They, they chunk up their time. So they're, they have active coding sessions at night. And during the day, they're collaborating with other people. So Grace, I hope that answers your question. And so I think that's one thing that we've also seen, people who ask, if you don't know exactly what to do, ask and you'll get an answer right away. We have a team of full-time people who are here and you're gonna get an answer right away, if not from the team, then from other members of the community. So, so I think there's another question about OS. And I, I think there isn't a particular requirement. In a sense, you can have Windows, you can have uh, Mac, Linux, and all of them. Um, normally, as the week progresses, not probably on week zero. And week zero, it's less maybe a requirement. But having Linux helps a lot. Um, you know, a Linux system, that means either you know, Mac or Ubuntu or other Linux flavors helps. Again, it's not a requirement. It's just, it's sometimes whenever we say install this, when you are installing some software, it's normally because the cloud is mostly driven by Linux. And sometimes the help that's there uh, to install that software usually is in the Linux environment. But there are also, you know, I, I think there isn't particular, but I, we encourage people to have at least dual uh, operating systems. And whenever it's required, you can switch to Linux. That would really simplify your life. But there's for this week, you don't have to do. Anything. There's a question on evaluation. How will trainees be evaluated? Um, trainees, I mean, again, in the challenge document, it exactly specifies how you know what you need to submit, and then that um, whatever you submitted would be evaluated according to the KPI. So that means the key performance indicators that we put in each of the the tasks in this week. And in another week, we even give you a breakdown of exactly what, um, you know, how much contribution is in, in everything, in everything we do. I think Aaron in his first, uh, you know, whenever he, when he talked um, about the different aspects, he told you we have the career and the technical and we have contributions because we know 50 percent and more. Sometimes uh, the job requires is your your non technical skills as well. Therefore, we have contributions that you, you make, you know, to help others as well as also to deliver your non, uh, your career uh, challenge will be considered as well as also the, the technical ones that we give you. And we give you that basically the breakdown of how much percentage is the career, how much percentage is that one. Again, the evaluation is to really assist, to help you figure out where you are and what is expected 
and then what is the best way so there will be feedback and what is um, basically expected from you or what is the best way the route for you to go to the basically what is required and we try to make everything personalized so we actually our training is personalized and accelerated which means basically we try to see everyone as they are instead of just as a whole class being evaluated in in one go so yeah evaluation is basically that like you will it, it will be super clear and it's going to be a rubric based and you will know exactly where why you got what you got um if they uh, the score there so it should be super self-explanatory maybe i can add one thing to that i think what we see is that there's usually two types of people in week zeros uh this is now the sixth time we've been doing this there are people who have they've made a real effort to solve the problem and there are people who don't make a real effort so i think the people who make a real effort even if your code is not working perfectly even if you didn't finish everything uh perfectly if you've made a real effort you've submitted everything and you've uh, tried things you've asked questions in the training channel so maybe to answer that uh, in more detail we look at the code that you submit we also look at how many questions you're asking we're looking at how many sessions you're participating in uh, how many times are you helping other people so if you ask questions you show up to all the sessions and you submit everything you're doing what we're asking you to do um, if you're able to submit code that's working well and uh, you've gone further, you're asking deeper questions, you've been able to uh, achieve, I, I don't think anyone's going to be able to get everything done. I think it's designed to be impossible to finish. Is that right, Gabriel? It's in, impossible to finish in the week? I, I think almost sometimes it might be. Um, it's a lot. So, you know, we always are putting for the one that could be you know she's gonna be finishing everything but it, if you don't finish it's fine right yeah. so it is explained also in the challenge document that it is not about doing as much as you can is what is required so samson i think the the summary is we're evaluating how much effort are you putting into it uh the leaderboard johans uh it's just a feedback mechanism it doesn't impact you in any direct way um, it, it, consider it as feedback. So if you're really, uh, yeah, can, I would say consider it as feedback. We're not going to be deciding. It, it, is not about, it is not about, I think Arun mentioned it and maybe just he, he said it and you might not understand what he meant. We want to admit 100% of the people in week zero. It doesn't mean we will accept 100%, but that's our interest. That means we're not trying to fail you. We're trying to give you feedback and everything we can so that you fit the criteria that, you know, we are not the judge. We are just a connector in part. There is a job out there, a lot, not only for 100 people, for, you know, 10,000 and 100,000 people can fit. And then there is, you know, the cell and us, how we understand it. And then there is, you know, our, the talent that we are getting. If we don't believe that, the talent will fit or it's not the right timing for them because they haven't they don't have that much experience in this and that or they haven't put the right you know mindset of course we can't accept because this is more or less our role is to really get everyone who can make it and then connect them or do all our effort so in that sense we want to make everyone we really expect everyone will make it and the leaderboard is really telling you just where you are at that time um, it doesn't mean you will not make it another time. If it's like, for example, if you are not putting your effort a lot because you have another thing to do, you know, probably won't make it. But that at least tells the leaderboard is kind of putting you there. But it, even if like, even if the whole, everyone is making it and the leaderboard, sometimes you are at the bottom of the leaderboard, it doesn't mean we will not accept you. So in that sense, the leaderboard doesn't affect. As long as everyone is above a certain uh, threshold, and even if they are at the bottom of the you know the the leaderboard will still accept you so in that sense it doesn't happen. it doesn't impact there's a couple of questions on linux versus windows so Henok, i think we don't want to get into the technical details given our limited amount of time you can ask why don't you ask that question in the day one channel and we can answer it there uh if you don't make it to week one it will not impact your ability to reapply for subsequent subsequent cohorts beneath Vinny's asking if it makes a difference. 
Yeah. So, I mean, just just to emphasize, guys, we we want to admit our goal is to connect people into global level jobs. We have a limited amount of time. So if you're able to put the work in and perform, and we believe that you can get there, then uh, we want to take everyone. Thank you so much. Pascaline, I think you're unmuted. Any last questions, guys? Do you guys want to know anything about Uh, Hillary asks, so Hillary, maybe you can reach out to Rodas on Slack, uh, because it's more of a, a specific question for you. So Hillary, maybe you can reach out to Rodas on Slack. Are there any other questions that people have? Any sort of, uh, questions for us? Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Does anyone want to share why they're interested in the training in the last five minutes? Can we maybe get one or two people to share why they're here? Do we want to get two people, one male, one female, to just share why they're here? Anania, yes, we have uh, we've announced the dates for cohort C already. Applications will open. I might get this wrong, but I believe it's the 1st of June, and I think the training will be starting uh, late in 2024. I can't remember the exact date, but uh, it should be, if it's not on our website, it will be up very soon, but this is not uh, our last training. No, does anyone want to share why they're here? <laughs> should, should we call, pe call, call people out? So I'm actually going to call people who've been asking questions. So Bethlehem, so can we get Bethlehem and Anthony? Uh, hello, uh, thank you for the info informative session. Uh, my reason for being here is to upscale my, my skills. Okay, that's repetitive, but yeah, upscaling uh, and then getting uh, a good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. What have, What have you tried up till now, Anthony? Have you been trying self learning? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Uh, uh, I'm a software engineer. Uh, doing. I I mostly enjoy working with Rails, uh, Ruby and Rails, React, but I'm open to learning Python, SQL. Okay. Bethlehem, are you able to unmute and also speak? I don't know the last name because there's no last name there. But Bethlehem was typing. She said she wants to learn and change her career path. Grace? Hello, everyone. So I'm here to improve my machine learning skills and to Grace you've gone on mute oh sorry um I'm here to improve my machine learning skills and to also get a good job because for the past two years I have been on this data science journey I've attended boot camps I've had diplomas different courses and uh, it's still been difficult to like fully break into tech so i'm hoping this program will be game changer for me okay great uh we have abraham who wants to get 10x better in his career kumi uh is summarizing it he wants someone to show him the money he wants the money njoki wants to grow in the career <laughs> johans doesn't want to get replaced by ai in the future who knows if that's a real person or a chatbot? Uh, level up. Mister wants to level up in Mister's career and get a better paying job. Get you ready. You can wrap up. You're the last one. Because then we have to hand up. We have to go to the next session. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm here uh, also to upskill my skills as a student. Uh, Cost me master degree in artificial intelligence at Carnegie Mellon University of Africa and. Uh, yeah, I want to get uh, or to face a real what challenges like while you offer here in training. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Well, th thank you, everyone. That wraps up our intro session. We're going to go, I think we'll take, uh, Yavid was leading the next session, so he's going to let us know uh, how many minutes of a break we're going to get. But just from my and side. In, in, yeah. Okay, go on, go on finish. Sure. Now, I was just going to say, uh, we're very happy that you're here. I just want to emphasize again, because uh, don't don't think that this is not a selection process in the typical way. We want you to be here. Don't be intimidated by uh, the challenge that you'll see. You'll be learning a lot. But for anyone who's genuine, who's ready to put the work in to get, it's it's difficult to get a global level job. If you're ready to put the work in, we have uh, we have seen that the system works, and so we hope that you'll stay with us uh, throughout this week, and that we'll get the chance to work with you for the next six months. So thank you very much, and yeah, over to you, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think Rodas will also just tell us in which, if we are finishing, if we are continuing with the same link, I would say we will stop the recording, but I think we have to exit maybe from this so that we can record the next session as well. Uh, but I would say like we will start in respective of, I mean, go and get uh, coffee or anything you want. Uh, we will start at in 10 minutes basically. So at just at 10, I will start. Um, but just that Rodas just you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Arun and Yabi, for uh, briefly explaining the overall program expectation and the goal of the training uh, as well. So one thing I would uh, really want to add or stress is that Week Zero is really an opportunity for you to prove yourself to us, and it's really about working hard dedicating your time and also demonstrating your uh, commitment through your work. So make sure to give it your all and be active to help others and even ask questions. So we'll be having our next session on the weekly challenge document introduction with Yapibal in just 10 minutes. You'll be able to go through the challenge document and also ask questions. Uh, we'll need to end this call now for attendance purposes, but make sure to rejoin just uh, right away using the same link. We will be using the same link uh, during the week as well. And yeah, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or the team if you have any questions. And we can, yeah, we can continue on Slack if there are any other questions left. We will just um, <clears throat> wrap up this call now and meet again in just, yeah, five minutes. Let's make sure to uh, keep this energy throughout the week. And yeah, thank you all for joining.